Hello, this is Vance, and this is Wednesday, November the 23rd, 2016. And these are the CL trades for today using the slow hand method for price action. Holiday week in the U.S., and as a result, uh, there won't be any significant trades tomorrow. And so for this is the last really report for the rest of the week. The overnight high was 48.34, and the overnight low well, the low of the day that it happened just near the open or just before the open was 47.40. So roughly a dollar uh, as far as from the overnight high and the overnight low was concerned. Um, we had this, looking at the chart, really about uh, from about 5.30 uh, Eastern Standard Time, price really kind of sold off and oil sold off. There was a bit of a resistance here. You can see it bounced on this, this area around the 47.81 area. Uh, maybe as low as 47, 45. In this area, it was as only see it had a couple of bounces, hesitations, and then it sold down lower. Now, right before, and I'll talk a little bit about a couple things. I'm going to talk a little bit about this area right here, which is kind of when the report came out. But really the first trade, when I started right, right about the 9 o'clock hour, was this uh, second entry, uh, a second entry long right here. You know, price comes down here, first entry. I mean, it, let's negate this tail for a moment. Price uh, breaks down here. This is a first entry, second entry long. Not a really tremendous setup, but there's a couple of other reasons besides just the second entry that you can look at. It's a double bottom here. You know, price has gone up, come back down. It's support from the left-hand side of the chart. We had a close outside of this channel, you know, like in the, well, a couple closes outside this channel. And when price dipped down here, the other thing is that where you put your stop. So if you take your 15 ticks and you, you can get your stop right below here, which is where you perceive that support. Even if it's just kind of, it only visited, price only visited down here, it broke to a new low and then rebounded out of that. So this was really the first trade. Where you get in, you might limit in, uh, but as long as you held your stop below the low of the day, where this bar that produced right here, and I'm thinking that you wouldn't have gotten into this trade until this price came back down and came back up so you have this strong bar here it did come back down again but it didn't wouldn't have taken out your stop at this juncture and then of course uh, a price move in, in, in addition to that you have depending where you got in if you got in right here you got enough room to get out to this double top right here or which is like hesitation from the left side of the chart as well and as you can see price uh, runners are safe uh, you had uh you know, at least what it got to this area. And then, of course, we had this turnaround. So, you know, you probably got a pretty decent move out of it, depending on contracts you traded. One contract, 15 ticks. You know, it was a 30, roughly a 30 tick move from where, you know, the entry was, uh, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, so that was a, a pretty a decent trade. Now, now we're getting close to the hour. This is at uh, right around 9.50, about 10 o'clock. Price sold off to this area. And here is just after 10. Now, again, this is a second entry long. Price makes a... You know, when a price breaks through this trend channel, there's our first entry, pulls back, second entry long. Uh, pretty decent uh, bar. It's a fairly strong bar, you know, depending where you get in. You would got your 15 ticks off of this, your first target, um, barely, and then it came pulled back again. And another second entry long right here. Now, there's a problem with this. The problem with this is that you don't really have, the problem is that it's so close to what time is going to, where the report comes out at 1030. This is 1017. We've only got like 13 minutes to the report. You can take the trade. And as you can see from this period, this is uh, 17 minutes after to where the report comes out is 1030, had quite a bit of movement. Um, so there was the anticipation of that report coming out certainly set a fire into the market. And so you can see it started to move pretty rapidly uh, because it was a, uh, a bill, uh, a drawdown uh, and more than was expected, then uh, prices really kind of moved up here. So taking a trade like this one, even though I marked it in blue, it's a nice setup. The problem is that uh, the problem is is that uh, we're looking at uh, a price uh, of so close to where the where the uh, report has come out and create can create volatility. There are other rules around trading the report. I've talked about it this in the past, and the fact of the matter is, like after ten o'clock or you know forty minutes before that uh, the uh, announcement, uh, you know price has a tendency to come out slow down. 
to a large degree. It didn't happen really this morning. We had a little bit of a sell-off, this 30 tick sell-off prior to that, just before at 10 o'clock. But uh, price can sold, slow down and start to bunch up. And if you can look at this, let's say from this area from here from 9, from 10 to we had a very a fairly tight range, and the tight range was from uh, 40 minutes, uh, 29 ticks, and, and not that many bars, not that much action until 10 minutes before the announcement. Evidently, somebody knew something or knew that the, the report would be bullish, a bullish report, and then right from here at 10.30, and this is 10.30 here, this long bar right here, price, of course, rocketed up here. So from here, from this area right here, uh, with from this trade at 10.17, to 10 uh, 1034 we're looking at uh, uh, just uh, not quite uh, 20 minutes uh, and because of that you can see price zipped up here you see look at all the activity uh, for driving price up to the and what resulted at this juncture at this point in time which is just 12:30 Eastern Standard Time, daily high of 48.43. So that really took place. The problem with trading, you know, there are some traders that won't trade five minutes before uh, the announcement or flatten their trades five minutes before the announcement and five minutes after the announcement. I don't take that view. Uh, if if I'm in a trade and I have room, let's say that it's, it's a runner and it's ahead of, I don't know. 10, 15, let's say 15, 20, 25 ticks or whatever it may be, I might uh, leave it on. And if it's uh, a runner, generally speaking, if it's a trade whereby I am, it's, I've got risk on it, I probably take that, I take that one off most of the time. I'm not saying that it's 100% sure, but I, most of the time, kind of stay flat through before, before and after the, the announcement. If, if I think uh, uh, I don't put a new trade on there. However, you can see that, and I guess the biggest problem is, more than anything else, is that when announcements do happen, the price moves extremely quickly, uh, depending on whether it's a bullish or bearish. Because of that, it's really no way to put your, your, to put your trades on. It just moves very, very rapidly. To do so is um, a risky, uh, much riskier proposition, in my opinion. Now, not saying that you can't do it, because you can see these, some of these setups, uh, if you can think fast enough to calculate your risk reward ratio on the fly and I can to the large degree because I've done this for so long now but uh, for anyone that is just trying to is just starting out it's a lot more difficult um, so to give you an example this is a um, this is a price makes new high first entry second entry long right here but it's not a great bar uh, here's another one here's a um, not really a, a second entry, but price makes his first pullback, fails, second pullback, and then right from here. But again, uh, do you have it is not quite enough room to get out from, from this area to this double top where price is closed. It's not quite enough room. So that's another one. Uh, as far as second entry shorts are concerned, you wouldn't take these because it's really the trend is really generally up. And so you see these closes are higher. And you know the, um, the lower highs and uh, or higher lows and higher highs, which is obviously the definition of a trend. Even though we have pullbacks to the EMA and to the bottom of this, ch this channel, um, we don't have any real uh, reversal until we get to this top here, where prices are starting to uh, uh, capitulate. You see the movements are not as great, and then uh, can't price can't make it to this double top and close it above it. And this is where you have this turnaround. Now, not to saying that these aren't a decent setup. I wanted to address this one right here. It's a second entry short or second entry long, I mean, at the bottom of this channel. Now, the, you could say this is the first entry and here's a second entry here. So this isn't a bad idea here. Uh, price comes back down. Now, if you left your stop at your 15 ticks, this one, you would be below this one and you below this bar right here by one tick. I mean, you'd be sweating on this, of course. So if you got into this here for the, the second entry long here, but more importantly, if price stacked up, depending where your entry was, if price stacks up um, or capitulates, you can see price came down here, failed, second time failed, and then from here, uh, you would have got your first contract off if you went long, right at here, but as you can see, you at 10 ticks, um, and I'm, what I'm saying that at 10 ticks, if you would have held on through this, you would have fulfilled your first target. 
But when price got to this top here, it turned in, in, in the other direction, didn't go any higher. This one here is another opportunity to get in. Now, what I'm saying about this one, if you put your, if you bought in here and you got your 10 ticks out and you move your stop to break even, you would have taken your price, you would have had, that would have been a scratch trade. But if you were rapid enough to see that this bar formed here, put another trade on, it got to this double top area, which you anticipated in the first place. That's all I'm saying. And the closes weren't outside this channel. When closes, when the, as you can see, this channel working its way up here, once the close happened outside this channel, then you can see this is where price failed. And right here is a decent second entry short. Now, I didn't mark this one. And the reason I didn't mark it is that, first of all, the trend has been up since the announcement. And now by this time, we know what the announcement is. Uh, but more importantly, we don't really have, we don't have not a lot of room to get out. In fact, we've had this double bottom here. We have this, this bottom here. Really, and even if this is uh, hesitation in this area, we have uh, double bottom here. This is another double bottom. Price has gone down here the first time. It's gone down a second time. Hasn't really, don't really know that it's going to uh, bounce. This is a second entry long, but it turns out to be a second entry, a failed second entry long that turns into a second entry short. Now, the only reason I marked this one in green or was reluctant on this one is because there isn't, price has to kind of break down before you would actually uh, uh, fulfill your target. And I would looked at this area here as, pre as support. Now, it works, um, and it goes through, and you can see this hesitation. It stacks up here and then falls, uh, makes its way through um, to this level, but then bounces virtually immediately off of, another area of support or uh, this area right here, as you can see for the left of your chart. Um, I didn't mark this as a, as a long, um, could very well have. I mean, this is, uh, now that I look at it, um, was, there was a break outside this channel, comes back down. This is a pretty strong bar. Uh, but again, this area here from here, 1054 to 1058. This takes four minutes to run down here. You don't know. You might retest the bottom here. So that's a little bit more, um, a little bit uh, more of a riskier uh, venture uh, from that particularly. Uh, and we're just right outside of that that area where uh, the timing, uh, the time how where we're going to be influenced. Is price going to continue to go up? Um, that's another. You don't really know uh, from moment to moment. So we can just focus on the price action. That's why. This is a pretty strong bar out of here, and I could see that if someone would take that, there's a reason to take that trade. Um, but again, it might be a little bit, a little bit aggressive. Um, as you can see, it worked out. We have this first pullback, second pullback, and another second entry long here. But on the other side, you can see this is kind of this is a second entry short as well from here, from counting from both sides, um, right to here. And my channel is likely like this. And somewhere in this neighborhood, I think something like that. Okay. Uh, another break. If you find it more handy, instead of just putting two channels in there, try to put one, just a single line to see where it breaks through. And then, because something like this, you know, this is 1117. This is three minutes. Price drops down like this, just wrapping very quickly. Your channel is going to be awfully narrow because it's just barely taking in these bars. So you just add these bars together. It's just like one big bar, somewhere like this. And you like this one up, this one down. And remember that this is where where the price, uh, where the where the drawdown was indicated right in this bar. And if we look right across, this is where price has been bouncing, where this drowned out identification is. Uh, and so that is kind of a significant area because, as you can see, when price comes down here, this first entry pulls back. Um, there's a second entry down here. Now, there's a second. this is a second entry, but you really want to wait until price really tests this area before you would take along. And so that's uh, the other idea, the idea, and this is toward the end of the day. Um, right now, as I'm talking, this is just 1230. So uh, that's pretty much it. Um, we just show that uh, area uh, over to here. I could, there's reasons to take this trade right in this area, like one of these trades, and then as long as your stop is below 
this area right of uh, is below. Let's call it uh, 15 ticks is below here with a bit of a cushion. You could have held on to that. Now, you could have gotten shaken out of any one of these things if you get a little bit nervous because of the time area. But as you see, price is now working its way back up. Uh, I would su su suspect that the next area of resistance is going to be right at 48.24. And, uh, and if that is, in fact, the case, you know, had you gotten, you know, one of these trades down here and bought in, limited in, it took a while to work its way out. Now we are from... Let's say even if you're early on it right here, let's say uh, 11.30, this is an hour later, well, 12.42. So we're talking 70 minutes here to, 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 as, as price is working its way up right through the noon hour. Now, even today, um, it could be slow because individuals are heading out for the long weekend and are knocking off at noon. Um, and the, there's, uh, I think the FOMC minutes are going to be reported today as well at 2 o'clock. I think that's what the, the release is. So that could be... I might have another influence on it. So uh, these trades on here, uh, put some trades on, especially when you have a news day. So the, what was working against us today was the fact that the uh, the uh, Department of Energy report is out this morning at 1030, which can cause some uh, volatility or or uh, in the trade market when, when the announcement is made, depending on whether it is a surprise or not. This has been Thanksgiving week and holiday, so that's another reason for things to be slower this week. Again, I won't uh, have any trading reports tomorrow or Friday, but I might put a, maybe a lesson on or something. I'll see how I feel about that. Uh, this is Vance. Hope you have a nice couple of days off. Bye for now.